we're talking about GFAP, which is glial. So you know already that's glia in the central nervous system in your brain. Fibrillary, which is also a bad word. You've got some sort of substance, acidic protein. So GFAP is the target of antibodies. So just like the whole host of antibodies, aquaporin-4 water channel for NMOSD, myelin oligodendrocytic glycoprotein for MOGAD, MOG associated disease, we now have another one that you have to learn, which is gliofibrillary acidic protein, GFAP. So the GFAP, it can come to ophthalmology, but often it comes with neuropsychiatric manifestations of encephalitis, which can look like neuropsych, it can be, look like limbic, and it's got a distinctive radiographic finding because it's got this perivenular linear enhancement on the MRI scan. So when we see that perivenular linear enhancement on the MRI scan, that is the typical radiographic feature of the post-contrast MR of GFAP. There's a biomarker, the, the serologic GFAP. We're going to be doing the usual suspects because the only way to know if it's GFAP is to test the person. And that means infectious, inflammatory, neoplastic disorders all have to be considered in the differential diagnosis, even though GFAP is an autoimmune inflammatory antibody mediated cause of encephalitis. The reason it comes to us is it can cause papillitis. And that papillitis means the disc is swollen and it can mimic papilledema. So patients who come to us with vision loss, disc edema, encephalitis, and a typical radiographic pattern we're gonna be thinking about the GFAP, just like you'd be thinking about NMO and MOG in, in their specific circumstances. And we do a lumbar puncture, and in many of the patients, we know it's papillitis because the opening pressure is normal. However, it's got inflammatory indices in it, and so the treatment, as with all autoimmune inflammatory disorders, can be anti-inflammatory treatments, steroids, immunosuppressive agents, IVI duplex. There aren't as many cases of GFAP as uh, NMO and MOG, so the precise etiology is not known and the precise treatment regimen is not clear. However, in general, we're going to follow the same treatment strategies as we do for the other autoimmune antibody-mediated disorders, and you should know that it can come to us as dyskinema.